Greetings. Let's discuss the quiz 7.1 through 7.3 today. So, uh, first question here. The cotangent is negative 405. So it says find the exact trigonometric value. We can use a calculator to assist us here. So cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. I don't really care if you use a calculator if you do this by hand, by the way. So if you do 1 divided by the tangent of negative 405, this will give us a decimal approximate, or it will give us an exact value if it ends up as an exact value, like negative 1. So negative 1. So again, what I did there is I did 1 divided by tangent of negative 405. Alternatively, I can look at the unit circle, and I can use the unit circle here to assist me. with its values. Remember tangent sine over cosine. So, next one, cosine of negative 870. Well, that one, cosine of negative 870. So again, this is the decimal approximate of this, negative 0.866. So I, I'd like you to memorize the roots. This is a root 3 over 2, not root 3. And it's pretty, it's it should be easy for you as a student to identify this as root 3 over 2 versus root 3 or versus root 2 over 2 because the square root of 3, if you type it in, is 1.73. The square root of 3 quantity divided by 2, so you need to press here, 0.866. And the square root of 2 divided by 2, 0.707. Cosine of negative 875, negative 855, sorry. 855. Negative 0.707. That's negative root 2 over 2. Or the opposite of root 2 over 2. Then uh, cosecant, this is 1 over sine. Now, the thing about the sine of 360, the sine of 360 exists and it's 0. So 1 divided by the sine of 360 is going to be undefined. This is one of the. Um, asymptotes on the cosecant function. If you remember when we graphed it, we had an asymptote at um, any time it crosses the x-axis or any time it crosses its midline. So when there's one at 0 and there's one at 2 pi, which is 360. So this is an undefined value. Alright, moving along. If the tangent is equal to 3.73, find the cotangent. So this is our negative angle identities. So here on the first page for um, 7.1, we had our reciprocal, had our tangent. We could use this bottom one too, the tangent squared identity. But the main one we're looking at here is uh, this guy right here. The tangent of theta, uh, pi over 2 minus theta is equal to cotangent. And the cotangent of 90 minus theta is equal to tangent. So we're looking at that one right there. So if the tangent of theta is equal to 3.73, find the cotangent of theta minus pi over 2. Well, this is our opposite order. So I want to switch that around. That's the same as the cotangent of the opposite of 90 minus theta. So I took a negative in front there, so it would be the cotangent, the cotangent identity here. So now I have this, so they're equal, but that negative sign, does that make it negative 3.73, or does that make it positive? So cotangent of negative x brings the negative in the front. That's from, pay, that's from the other identities, the even odd identities, because cotangent and tangent are odd functions. So that negative is going to come in front and make this negative answer. So negative 3.73 is the proper answer or the opposite of 3.73. There's some other al alternatives here to getting this so that we can understand it, besides using the even odd identities and the co-function identities, which we haven't shown you yet, specifically finding what the angle would be, then moving backwards. Anyway, so this one's set up properly. This one was not set up properly. We had to bring the negative in front. This one is, so I don't need to use the negative angle identity, or the odd identity, sorry. So this one here, 
cosecant and secant. The secant of 90 minus theta is equal to the cosecant of theta because they're 90 degrees apart. So that one's set up perfect for us. So that's going to be the same, the same number, option B. Anyhow, so when you're working these, you're working with the even odd identities and the cofunction identities. All right, so find the value of the trig function indicated. Find the sine of theta if the cosine of theta is equal to 2 over 3. So this is x over r. And if I drew the triangle, which I probably should draw a triangle here with this, this would be 2, this would be 3. I just need to find the missing side here, which would be the y side. All right. So we're going to do <coughs> the Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared minus 2 squared. 9 minus 4 is 5. Y is the square root of 5. And so sine should be Y over R, square root of 5 over 3. Now I'm just working in quadrant 1 here. Since I didn't give you a quadrant number, it's quadrant 1. And the same thing here, that's why I made a multiple choice. So you wouldn't be confused about the quadrant. On the next ones, I do different quadrants on uh, 9 and 10. So here we got the same deal. This time we got Y and R. We've got sine given. So I'm going to draw me a triangle. Y is 4, R is 5. So I'm going to do 5 squared minus 4 squared. 25 minus 16 is 9. X equals the square root of 9, which is 3. So the cosine will be th X over R, 3 fifths. X and R divided 3 and 5, in other words. All right, these ones are done the same way. The difference here is I'm telling you a quadrant number. So here I'm saying cosine is positive, so this is either going to be in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. So if we look here at the sine being positive, sine is positive in quadrant 1 only, 1 and 2. So it's in quadrant 1. So this is a quadrant 1 answer. This one, cosine is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. Well, Tangent's only positive in quadrant 1 and 3. So this is quadrant 3, the answer here. That's just going to tell you in the end if it's negative or positive, your answer. These ones I made right on, so you have to actually, you know, find the answers longhand. So here, sine of theta is 4 sevenths. We're going to draw a triangle again. Here's theta, and we're looking for x. We have y and r, 4 and 7. We're going to do 7 squared minus 4 squared. I got 49 minus 16. 7 squared minus 4 squared. 33. All right, and cotangent should be x over y, or in other words, adjacent to hypotenuse instead of op adjacent to opposite instead of opposite adjacent. So cotangent here would be square root of 33 divided by 4. All right, here I'll draw my triangle. I've got a 3 and a 5. Remember, cotangent is adjacent, opposite. So that's 3 and 5 that way. So we're looking for R. 3 squared plus 5 squared. 9 and 25 is 34. All right, and um, sine should be opposite hypotenuse. So 5 divided by square root of 34. Now here's where the quadrant comes into play. In quadrant 3, sine is negative. So my answer here is negative. Because this is a quadrant 3 answer. Because we say cosine is negative, meaning it's quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. It's got to be quadrant 3 because the tangent's positive. Um, if you forget which, which, uh, which ones are positive and which quadrants, uh, the good acronym to remember it is all of them are positive in quadrant 1. Sine is positive in quadrant two, so maybe you could say acronym like all students. Tangents positive in quadrant three, and cosines positive in quadrant four. So in quadrant three, sine and cosine are negative. Tangents the only one positive. In quadrant four, sine and tangent are negative. Cosines the only one positive. And in quadrant two, cosine and tangent are negative. 
Science is the only one that's positive. All students take calculus. So if you forget <coughs> which quadrants well, which have which one it's positive in, that can help you remember it right there. So I did make half the questions multiple choice, one through eight are multiple choice, not uh, nine through sixteen or not. Um, in terms of what identities I intend to give you for the test, I'm most likely going to give you um, a uh, sheet with the co-function identities on it, the even odd identities on it, and the Pythagorean identities on it. With the reciprocal quotients. So I don't really care if you memorize all the identities and stuff from this. I just care if you can use them more or less for the questions. Now moving on to the second page. There we Here we go. Verify the identities. So here we're working on 7.2. That one was 7.1, that one we just did this is 7.2, and then the last two are 7.3. So here. I would replace everything with sines and cosines to start it off with. Um, you're also welcome to perhaps do some multiplication, but I would just do replacement of sines and cosines. Either work on the left or the right, it doesn't matter which side you work on, really. This is 1 over sine squared x over 2, and then the tangent identity, the quotient identity says tangent sine over cosine. 2 sine x over cosine x. Now I can work with just this side or I can work with the, the right side as well if I want. Cotangent uh, cosine over sine x. And then uh, times 2 sine squared x on the bottom. <coughs> so again, the, the key with these is, is it's clear in the denominators basically. Clear the denominators, make them into single fractions when you have multiple fractions like this. So um, what I'm seeing here is, is we have multiple fractions on both sides. So maybe on the right side, I'll just bring this up with the sine x, make it side cubed x. Because when you take a fraction and divide it by like a cosine and sine as a fraction, and divide it by another, another item, it just multiplies. So maybe I'll rewrite that right side as cosine x divided by 2 sine to the third x, sine cubed x. And then this left side, this left side is a little more tricky, but I can do a keep change flip here if I'd like, or if I prefer, I can do uh, another type of operation where I times by cosine, top and bottom, to move the cosine to the top, and then it becomes like the right side, exactly like the right side. So if I times this by cosine top and bottom, it'd be cosine x over sine squared x, and then that cosine would cancel. And it would look just like this guy. Except it would have the sine squared in the top and the sine x in the bottom. But because I already wrote the right side, I'll, re I'll do the left side a similar thing. Well, I'll do a keep change flip. I'll flip this fraction into cosine x and then um, sine x, cosine x on the top and sine x on the bottom. So I'll have 1 over sine squared x times cosine x over 2 sine x. And then we have it verified because they're the same on both sides now. That 2 sticks with the sign because it's um, 2 over 1. So when it flips, it becomes 1 over 2. So uh, there's, a, there's one of the ways to do that. There's nothing really to circle here because this one I want you to verify each identity. So you have to go through and you know have to go through the steps and verify what you have to do. All right, so next one. And by the way, these aren't in order of difficulty. I just put four questions here that looked like you could do them. So uh, tangent is sine over cosine. So I'll replace tangent with sine x over cosine x. And what I notice here is that the cosine x's will reduce. Here and here. Until over there and I have it proved. Because those cosines will cancel. One's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. Anyways, next one. What I'm going to do here with this 1 plus tangent squared I'm seeing this 1 plus tangent squared, and I'm thinking that's a Pythagorean identity. Anytime you have a 1 plus a trig function squared or minus a trig function squared, 
you should be thinking Pythagorean identity. <coughs> so 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So I'm going to replace that with secant squared right now. <coughs> so this is sine squared x over secant squared x equals cosine squared x over cosecant squared x. I'm going to replace the secant squared and the cosecant squared with their reciprocal identities. So now I have sine squared x divided by 1 over cos squared x equals cosine squared x over 1 over sine squared x. And similar to what happened up on question 11, this is going to flip to come to the top. Or you can think of it as this times it by cosine squared and cosine squared top and bottom to move it to the top. And this one times by sine squared and sine squared to move it from the bottom to the top. So now I'm going to have sine squared x cosine squared x equals cosine squared x sine squared x. Ah, verified. So can I reciprocal that to bring it to the top? Or I could say I times by cosine squared top and bottom. And here I times by sine squared, numerator and denominator. Cool. All right, this one. Similar to what I did in the last one, on the left here, I'm going to be working with negative cosine squared x divided by, sorry, times by, because it's times. I'm not going to do the divide by first. Times by 1 over sine squared x. Now that 1 minus cosecant squared, Again, anytime you have a 1, minus, or plus, a trig function, you should be thinking Pythagorean identity. So this is 1 minus cosecant squared. So I'm looking at this. It's right here. It's cotangent squared, but it's the opposite of it. Because I'd have to bring the cosecant over here with the 1 and the cotangent over here to, to make it 1 minus cosecant squared. So that's cotangent, but it's the opposite of cotangent squared. So that's the opposite of cotangent squared of x, that right side. And this left side is negative cosine squared x divided by sine squared x. And then this, well, this is a quotient identity. Cotangent equals cosine over sine. So now I've finished it. Cosine squared x over sine squared x equals cosine squared x divided by sine squared x. All right, so again, these ones, there's nothing really to circle. I'm just asking you to go through steps to prove them. It's prove to me it's equal on both sides. So when you're going through these four questions, there's there's multiple paths as well. When you're going through these four questions. You just have to explain to me why it's equal. I did make them small enough so they fit side by side like that. So they, they shouldn't take you super long to do. So if you're spending a whole lot of time, a whole long amount of time, large amount of time doing them, you're probably doing something wrong if you're trying to do a whole bunch of steps. All right, the last couple here are what we did in 7, 3. So we're going to solve for the sine of theta by times and by 2, both sides. So the sine of theta is equal to negative 2 fourths, which is the same as a half. And then here I can use the unit circle to figure out what the angle would be, if I memorize the unit circle really well. Or I can just use a calculator to give me an answer. I'm in degree mode. So the arc sine of negative 2 fourths it's negative 30. Now that's a quadrant 4 angle. Sine is negative in quadrant 4 and quadrant 3. So I wanted a quadrant 4 angle and a quadrant 3 angle. I'm going to add 360 to it to get a coterminal angle. So it's actually in quadrant 4 and so it's between 0 and 360. So 330 and the quadrant 3 angle that corresponds to that would be, yes, 210. How can you check your work here? Type it in the calculator. Is the sine of 330 a negative half? Yes. Is the sine of 210 a negative half? Yes. Very easy to check your work and make sure you got the two correct angles. You'll have two answers here. Unless I give you something weird. Something really weird. Because again, there's two quadrants where sine is negative. Quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. 
and I want to both because I said solve the solve each equation for 0 to 360. Alright, at this point I'll divide by negative 4. That'll make it so that negative on the right is now positive. So the cosine of an angle is the square root of 2 over 2. Positive. So cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So I'm looking for quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So the arc cosine of the square root of 2 divided by 2. This will give me the quadrant 1 angle, 45. So say it is 45 degrees. That's good. I don't have to add 360 to that because that's already in between 0 and 360. That's my quadrant 1 angle. My quadrant 4 is going to be 360 minus 315 degrees. Again, I can verify my work here. Is the cosine of 45 square root of 2 over 2? 0 0.707, yes. Is the cosine of 315 the same value? Yes, 0 0.707. If you're having trouble with the reference angles, the reference angles, remember, from when we did them for the reference angles, in quadrant 1, you just keep the angle. In quadrant 2, you take 180 minus the angle from quadrant 1. In quadrant uh, 3, you take 180 plus the angle. And in quadrant 4, you take 360 minus the angle. Move into the separate quadrants. And again, it's got to be in quadrant 1 first before you can do this. If it's not in quadrant 1, you got to do some other things with it first to make it a quadrant 1 angle. Like subtract 180 from it or subtract it from 180. Stuff like that to make it so it's a quadrant 1 angle. Anyhow. So there's your questions. I'm probably going to make it more three each so I can have it out of about 50 points. It'll be 48 points this quiz. Good luck.